Hello and welcome to this microeconomics video on production possibility frontiers. In this video we're going to be looking at the use of production possibility frontiers and also the distinction between movements along and shifts in the production possibility curves and we're also going to be looking at the distinction between capital and consumer goods. So before we examine those I just need to give you a brief on the different factors of production, capital, entrepreneurship, labour and land and a good way to remember this is sell capital entrepreneurship labour and land so these are what are known as factors of production all these go into the production um, process so capital is the investment in goods that can produce other goods in the future it might refer to machines roads factories schools and office blocks which human beings have produced in order to produce other goods and services. So it's what needs to be produced in, produced in order to produce other goods. Entrepreneurship, that's, that's someone who organises production and identifies projects to be undertaken, often bearing the risk of the activity. Now, entrepreneurship is kind of, you could say, the odd one out in these because in order to get all these ones here, you must first start with entrepreneurship. Um, labour, well that's the human input into the production process, pretty simple. And land, it, land is the natural resources available for production. And items on that land also count as lamb. So for example, uh, land, sorry. So for example, if there were lamb on the land, that would count as land. So point A, the use of production possibility frontiers to depict maximum productive potential of an economy, economic growth or decline, efficient or inefficient allocation of resources and the possible and unobtainable production. So looking at this point here, you can see that F over here is an output. So, OK, sorry, actually, we'll start with this is the PPF curve right here. And this is basically with all the different factors of production you have available. This is how many goods or services and things you can produce. So point B, A and C are what is known as efficiently producing goods. D and E now, as you can see, they're not at the curve of the PPF, which means that they're not using all the goods, um, or all the factors of production available, which means that they are inefficient combinations. And point F over here, well, this is unobtainable because the PPF curve is not yet over there which means that we can't yet produce at that bit having said that if the ppf curve were to increase to um where f is then that would be efficient and that would be um able to obtain so point b as you can see there's more outputs of peepses than output of sugar so for example try and and draw a line. Oh, okay, that hasn't worked. So let's just pretend we're uh, producing at point B. Then this is producing quite a lot of pizza, but not much sugar. Whereas if you're producing at point A, you're kind of producing an equal amount of pizza, well, still slightly more pizza but a good amount of sugar as well. So that's quite an equal production. Whereas here, at point C, you're producing more sugar than pizza. So you've decided to try and produce more sugar than pizza. So as I tried to explain um, with point F, economic growth can be seen using a PPF diagram. So this is when the, P uh, the PPF curve extends outwards. And that... Um, can be seen here where AC is producing here where and then BD over here that's an outwards shift so looking at opportunity cost and the production possibility frontier um, sorry uh, opportunity cost of employing more resources into cost in production is expressed in terms of the output of wheat given up. So for example, if you decide to produce at point A, you could be producing 200 units of wheat and 300 units of output, uh, of cotton, sorry. But say you want to produce more cotton, so you decide to produce 400 units of cotton at point B. But the opportunity cost here 
is 40 units of wheat. So you can produce 40 units less of wheat. And you also might need to use a production possibility frontier to look at diminishing returns and opportunity cost. So that's again similar when you can produce even oh, at point C here, you're producing even less wheat, so 80 units less wheat and 80 units more cotton. So point B, the distinction between movements along and shifts in a production possibility curve, considering the possible causes for such changes. So shifts in the PPF curve are caused by advances in technology. So more goods can be produced with everything else. Ceratus, Ceratus paribus held constant. Um, changes in resources. So if you've got more resources, you can produce more or better quality resources. And that equals more produced. So if you've got more resources, you can shift um, the PPF curve outwards. Um, if you've got more education and training, so an investment in human capital, then there's even more possibilities for production. So you've got more people who can work, which means that you can produce even more goods. Um, if, there's a, if there's a change in the labour force, so if you've got more labour, again, that will shift it to the right because you can produce more. And a natural disaster, now that can cause a contraction in the PPF curve because it means you've got even less goods. So now looking at the distinction between capital and consumer goods. Well, consumer goods are for present use, whereas capital goods, such as machinery and tools, are to be used to increase the future capacity of the economy. So they're used for investment. So consumer goods for present, capital goods are to be used for investment for the future. And the more consumer goods we produce, the higher the opportunity cost. So what that means is the more goods we produce, the happier, the healthier, the richer the people will be in the short run because they've got more goods right then. But then the more capital goods we produce now, the more both types of goods can be produced in the future. So it means in the short run, people have less goods, but in the long run, people will have more goods for future generations. Um... So we need to, so this is one of the big economic crises is we face a trade-off between happiness now or happiness in the future. Now, if the point is below the PPF for capital and consumer goods, there's what's known as unemployment of resources in the economy, and this is not efficient. So this is say, if there's a point over here, then that would be unemployment of goods, which would be inefficient. And sometimes you might see a PPF being a straight line, and that's when the factors of production suit both types of goods. So, for example, if you had football um, footballs over here and rugby balls over here, I don't know much about them, so it could be different materials, but I'd assume they're similar, then you might have a straight PPF curve because the factors of production are equally suited. And that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed.